welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at a recap of the plants topic. In this lesson we will look at the uses of plants other than food, the type of reaction by which plants produce their own food, and the requirements for this process and how we can test if this process has happened. So first of all let's have a think back to uses of plants. I want you to pause the video now and sketch out this mind map and complete the empty bubbles for some uses of plants other than food. So the three main uses of plants that are not food are for medicines, raw materials and fuel. We can then put in a few examples of these different uses of plants. So for medicine, there are some medicines that we get from plants. One would be aspirin, which comes from willow trees, and quinine, which is used to treat malaria. For raw materials, we would have things like wood being used as a building material, and bamboo, which you could use to build furniture. For fuels, you could use wood directly to burn as a fuel, or you could use something like sugarcane, which can be turned into alcohol, which can be used in place of petrol in cars. Let's have a look and see if you can work out what some of these plants are used for. So here we have plant number one. What do you think this plant is used for? Look at the photograph carefully. Plant number two, what do we think this one is used for? Plant number three, what is this one used for? Particularly focus on this part of the tree. Plant number four, plant number five, and finally, plant number six. So for plant number one, this was a rubber tree. You can see the rubber being tapped off here into this basin. And rubber can be used to make things like welly boots and uh, car tires. The second plant was a cotton plant. So cotton can be used to make cotton wool, thread or clothes. It is a very common use of cotton. Plant number three was a cork tree. So we can use cork to make corks for bottles or for pin boards. Plant number four was the sapodilla tree, which is used to make chewing gum. Plant number five is hemp. So hemp can be used to make fibers, which can be spun into rope or can be made to use, uh, make clothing. It can also be used to make um, concrete, which can be used to make bricks. And our final plant was bamboo. So bamboo can be used directly to make furniture. It can be spun into fibres to make clothes, or it can also be made into paper and can be used for toilet paper. So how do plants produce their own food? The process by which plants produce their own food is called photosynthesis, and there are a few different requirements. So plants need to take in water through their roots, through their leaves, they take in sunlight and carbon dioxide from the air. They then give out a few different products. So from the leaves, we get oxygen and they also produce sugars, which they use as their own food. Pause the video now and sketch out this diagram. So during photosynthesis, we take in carbon dioxide and water and we turn these into glucose and oxygen. We can represent this using a word equation. So this happens in the leaves of plants. So they take in carbon dioxide from the air. They take in water through their roots. They use chlorophyll, 
which is in their leaves and is a type of pigment with sunlight to produce oxygen and glucose. Pause the video now and copy this word equation and note. Plants use a pigment called chlorophyll to capture light energy. Chlorophyll is, is found within the cells of the plant's leaves. The light energy is turned into chemical energy through this process. There are different uses of glucose within the plant. One use is for energy. Another is structural within the cell walls. And finally, as starch. This is the way that plants store the food that they make for later. Pause the video now and copy out these different uses. We can test if starch is present in a plant and therefore if photosynthesis has taken place by using an indicator called iodine. When iodine is added to a plant which has undergone photosynthesis, it changes from a red-brown to a blue-black colour. We can see this in this video clip. So what are the requirements for photosynthesis? We need to have carbon dioxide present, sunlight, water and chlorophyll. But how could we test if they were really essential? To know if you really needed one of these things for photosynthesis to take place, you would need to deprive the plant of one of them. You could then test the plant's leaves using iodine to see if starch is produced. Here we can see some leaves that have been tested. So in this first example, we have a brown leaf. So this is after testing with iodine. Since the iodine has not changed colour, we can conclude that there was either no carbon di dioxide present or no sunlight. On the other hand, this leaf here, which is a dark blue colour, tells us that carbon dioxide and sunlight were both present. In this leaf here we have a variegated leaf. Variegated leaves have sections which have no chlorophyll and are therefore not green as you can see around the outside here which is white. When we test these leaves with iodine we can see that these parts here stay brown where there is no chlorophyll. Where there is chlorophyll it changes to the blue-black colour. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.